This is Dominic. All right, there we go, there we go. All right, thank you for uh, joining us today here at Tall Trainer. Uh, thank you for watching it online as well. Uh, today we're going to be talking about overcoming difficulties in weight loss. So in the journey of weight loss there's so many aspects. There's the emotional, there's the mental, there's the physical, then there's the nutrition aspect of it. So right now today some of the main aspects that we really think about though are nutrition and exercise. Those are the two key ones that people really think about. Um, for instance, in exercise, people think about it's starting to go to the gym or starting to just start walking, go running around, jogging a certain distance or jogging for a certain amount of time. Um, tonight, what I want to focus on more is the nutrition aspect of it. Um, not that exercise isn't important. Um, I'm not saying that, but the nutrition aspect is just what we're going to focus on tonight and some of the difficulties that people face with that. We're going to address some of those and then the solutions to those that I've learned over time through experiences, through school, and through other people's uh, perspectives on it. So some of the difficulties we'll talk about tonight is eating processed food, quick clean tactics. So these are the things that you would think about if you're on a road trip, going on vacation in the airport and such. Breaking cravings, liquid calories, which many people don't really consider. Uh, break and breaking the plateau is what we'll finish off with today. So, going into here, eating processed food. We all have done it. We all love it. If we didn't, if it didn't taste so good, we would not be eating it because we, m most of us, understand that it's not the greatest stuff to eat. Uh, but because of how t good it tastes and everything, we don't really understand sometimes why we still like it, even though our brains understand through um, you know knowledge and information we've gained we got to stop eating. So like burger and fries, you know, we probably shouldn't eat, but why do we like it so much? Well, fast food and or processed food can be addictive. So it can be addictive. Certain foods can cause a feel good pleasure in this brain. Feel good pleasures from dopamine, which your body then um, activates and releases in the bloodstream. So this dopamine makes you feel pleasure. The brain's like, oh, this is great. Whenever I have this, I feel this way, so I want this more often. So then you're going to start eating a lot more junk food like burgers, pizza, ice cream because of this dopamine chemical being released into the bloodstream. So what happens though is over time, the body starts to build tolerance to this. Starts to build tolerance. This means that the feeling that you got from having that burger, let's just say, and fries, like we had the picture before, at the beginning, that satisfaction starts to dwindle. So what is you want? You're like, oh, I, it's not that pleasurable. I want another burger and a bag of flies or something, or I want another burger. And then over time, you're going to have more and more just to get the same amount of pleasure that you had in the original burger. That means more calories, more sa saturated fat in your bloodstream, more carbs, everything else that's not great that's associated with like a cheeseburger and other junk food so that's one of the reasons why it can be addictive they do this also because they know that you're gonna want it again so they're gonna get your money again so they're gonna try to make it more addictive with different carbs and sugar which we'll address a little bit here coming up so foods that have a potent combination of carbohydrates and fats so the people that process this food, they understand that the body reacts to it this way, that the brain is like, oh, this is pleasurable, this is joyful, this is what makes me happy. So they'll induce it with a ton of carbs, a ton of fats, and not a large amount of protein. So what will happen is that you will have many nutrients that won't be there, like refined grains. Refined grains are when they take um, whole grains and they refine and take away many of the nutrients, like fiber, which is crucial um, for your digestive system and uh, many other aspects of the body and they'll replace it with some like sugar and have a ton of sugar in it and then the carbohydrates and fats as well. This makes it more addictive, it makes it pleasurable, it means the dopamine is going to be released a lot more often which means you're going to want to buy it more which means they're going to get more money from you. So that's one of the ways we process food that makes it so addictive is that combination of carbohydrates and fats. Now in nature, it's not like this as much. You either get, for instance, rice. It's going to be high, either high, high in carbs and then low in fat. And then some nuts, too. High in fat, low in carbs. It's not a combination of high carbs, high fat. 
it's going to be either or. So that's why it makes it a lot different than food you find, what I call whole foods in nature that aren't processed, that aren't refined, and stuff like that. So these are some of the addictive combos here. So ice cream, really heavy with fat and sugar in there in the ice cream. You could get low fat ice cream, but still there's a, a good amount of sugar and it won't really satisfy you a ton. There may be some protein in it because of the dairy, but it still won't really satisfy the hunger you have inside of you. So you're going to want more and more of it, which means you're going to have more and more calories inside your body. Now um, chips over here, uh, they do look a little bit healthier chips like kettle chips or baked chips. Baked chips are more uh, have less sodium than regular Lay's chips. Um, they're a little less fat, but it's still not the greatest for you because still high carbs, and you're still going to crave a lot more than you should have of that. Instead of that, maybe in try vegetables or fruit, which we'll discuss more in depth here coming up. But these are some of the things that they mix. The companies mix the ingredients of um, with a lot of that carb and fat content that they like to put in there which makes it a lot more addictive. Now, so, uh, research was done where scientists asked people what foods they thought were most likely to overeat. And this was processed foods that they were most likely to overeat. So chocolate, this can be in the form of chocolate syrup, chocolate bar, chocolate chips. Um, they Also pizza, the great fattening of the cheese and the carb with the bread. A lot of times people just have one slice and then they're not very satisfied. So then they have another one and then that's already a ton of almost like probably over half of the calorie intake you're supposed to be having in the day depending on what you have on top of the pizza and so forth. Um, ice cream again like I said you could try to do the low fat one but it's still a ton of sugar and you're not going to be satisfied enough in if you instead of having something that's healthier like apples or some type of fruit that's a little bit higher in sugar. Uh, French fries French fries are very addictive for many people. Uh, a lot of times, too, when you go to a fast food place, they just take a box and dump as many as they can fit in there. So it's not always like counted out one, two, three. And then each one's a different length, too. So you're going to see different sizes at restaurants and stuff. So it's going to be very um, tempting to keep on going back to those. And then cheeseburgers, like I said, talked about this before, they have a lot of. Um, saturated fat in them and can r raise the level of cholesterol. So with that, what's going to happen is inside of your arteries, there's going to be plaque starting to build. So once that plaque starts to build, that means there's going to be a narrower space for that blood to pass through. So if there's a narrow space for that blood to pass through, that's going to increase the blood pressure. That's going to cause the heart to have to pump harder for the greater amount of blood volume. That's called stroke volume. Stroke volume is where it's the amount of blood that passes through the body in one heartbeat. So if you have to have a greater amount of heartbeats to generate more blood, that's going to increase the blood pressure, increase the heart rate, and it's not very good for your cardiovascular system at all. It could probably lead you eventually to heart disease if the plaque gets worse. So those are some of the things that researchers found that people would most likely overeat. So I would suggest in this aspect try to stay away from these and the fact of trying to keep them out of your house if you can. I found that a lot of people if you keep them in your house it's more tempting. Um, I know now we can get them delivered but try not to get the apps like Uber or something. Try not to get those and uh, just try to stay away from these because once you want it once you're going to want it again. So if you just don't start here and try to stop today it, it will help for the future. So uh, stay away from processed foods and choose whole foods. Like I mentioned, there's many whole foods or whole grains as well, um, like whole grain bread, bagels, um, instead of refined or enriched grains. So these options here can be helpful in different situations. So um, some quick clean tactics. We'll go in depth a little bit more with these. So choose healthier options when in difficult situations. So this could be like on the road, um, maybe you had a surprise get together with some family or friends, um, just choosing healthier options in that area. Um, another thing is being aware of portion sizers. Get smaller portions of some of the things you love to eat or drink. So uh, I'll get more in depth with that one, but that one's a key one that many people don't really understand how much is in a serving. A lot of times they assume it's uh, going to be a larger amount than it really is. So. Uh, 
getting in tuned and inclined on what that is specifically is very important and a clean tactic to use. And then choose grilled over fried for stuff like uh, grilled chicken over fried chicken and um, I'll get into that a little bit more later on. So whole grains. Whole grain foods contain fiber and the majority of vitamins. Now there is a slight warning here. It is higher in calories so you have to be a little bit uh, careful about that. A lot of times they're thicker thicker slices of bread, thicker slices of bagels compared to enriched or refined grains. So the difference with these is with the whole grain bagels are ones that just came about with na naturally and they have a lot more vitamins and they have a lot more fiber inside of them as well. Now the refined grains are ones that they take out the majority of the nutrients that your body needs for, from that out of there so it no longer has that so that's why a lot of times refined grains have a little bit lower calories um, was because they took a lot about that out and it's a lot thinner as well um, enriched is where they tried to actually take it out take out the nutrients take out the vitamins and then they replace them back in so this is kind of the same nutrients as whole grains it's not as healthy and fresh because it was processed still where they took out the vitamins they took out the fiber and then just try to put them back in to the food item. So um, I suggest whole grains a lot of times for this. And um, you could miss some of the vitamins, but the majority of ones that you need are in there. So some of the options here, whole grain pasta, brown rice, popcorn, barley, buckwheat, whole wheat bread, and some other ones, but those are the major ones there. Pasta, I feel like is a great option there, choosing whole grain pasta instead of just uh, refined grain. Uh, it's just to get you more fiber in your diet. You need about uh, 20, 25 grams per day of fiber. Um, that's probably a higher end of it too. So uh, it's great to make sure that any chance you get to put it in there and try to add in that extra fiber that you can add in there. So that's kind of like why it's a clean tactic because you can use it sometimes just adding it in there, changing this slight change in your diet. Say you like pasta. So instead of having the refined pasta, you could just change it slightly to the whole grain pasta and it can help you a lot there with gaining the fiber and nutrients you need. Brown rice here is actually uh, less calories than uh, white rice, or jasmine rice. So that's a great option too with less calories plus the nutrients that your body needs that the refined rice does not have. Um, another clean tactic here is portion sizes. Portion sizes is, are huge because a lot of people don't really realize the size that they have, either it be a coffee or a bowl of salad or even a bowl of soup, a size of sandwich you have, cheeseburger, size of fries or something. It doesn't it, it just varies and many people don't really realize how much it actually is. So many times uh, the healthy sizes that are smaller actually are actually cheaper too. So like a lot of times people think about, oh, I, it's hard to eat healthy because I can't really afford it. Well, you can in this option. This can actually be a lot cheaper, save you in your wallet, and also save you health-wise by not having to drink as much or eat as much of a portion size as before. So some of the options here, so shifting from medium cafe latte made with whole milk to a small cafe latte with fat-free milk. Now. I want to point out that even if it was the same whole milk, it still would be a lot less calories and a lot cheaper than getting a medium cafe latte. So even though it is fat-free milk, so they changed the milk up there, it still would be cheaper and a lot healthier because of a lesser portion. Another thing here, regular cola, you can trade that in for water or water flavored with fruits or vegetables. Um, the fruits and vegetables here, you could add in raspberries are pretty good. Um, I know they have the sparkling water down there, we'll talk about that in a minute, but lemons are pretty good, cucumbers, blueberries, so various things there that you could add in and kind of add flavor to your water. So with the Coke, uh, cola there, it's um, first of all it's a medium, you can see the size as well, shifting down again to a smaller portion size, less money, and um, less calories as well. And um, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but cola a lot of times has a lot more calories. And a lot of times people call it the liquid calories, wasted calories, because it's not satisfying at all. And you're putting in all these calories into your body. And so a lot of times they refer to that as wasted calories because it's not very satisfying. Sweetened lemon iced tea to sparkling water with 
natural lemon flavor. So with the sparkling water, getting the, some people like how the soda with the bubbles and stuff, sparkling water is a good change for that. Um, with the sweetened lemon iced tea is a lot less sugar with the lemon flavor, natural lemon flavor, and also with that is more natural sugar. It may be even, it might be less or the same amount of sugar, but it's different. It's not artificial sweet um, sugar like the sweetened lemon iced tea would give you. It's a lot more natural, which means it's a lot more healthy in your body. Uh, we'll be able to process it a lot more easily than if it was processed and artificial. So the high calorie stacks versus nutrient dense snacks. So a lot of these are just different options you could add into your um, pantry, your refrigerator. So shifting from a lot of chips and pretzels and stuff that are usually high sodium to carrots. Um, fruit products with added sugars, you can change that to just fresh fruit. You could put it on your countertop or in the fridge or whatever. And um, like I said, the sugar is natural more, so it might be around the same, but it's not as artificial. So refined grains, like I said, like we uh, talked about before with the whole grains, refined grains, big difference there. Snacks with added salt or sugars. Um, a lot of times people don't really realize what actually contains sugar or salt, like uh, barbecue sauce with sugar. Um, you don't really think about it as much or uh, peanut butter a lot of times. One of the um, bargain brand ones would have a lot of sugar in it, so you want to be careful with that and fat. So it's a lot of stuff that people don't really consider in some substances that really, really um, do make a change and make a dramatic contribution to your health. Snacks without added salt or sugar, so snacks that have salt, but it's not, it's a little bit different. It's not like um, sodium that you'd get from a fry. Instead, it's more like natural, like sea salt and stuff. Because I know a lot of people are like sometimes, especially in the summer, you're out and about, sweating outside. You think you need to replace a lot of that sweat with this that's coming out in salt to um, replace it with sodium and such. So a lot of times you want to make sure it's natural and not processed or artificial like I was saying before. So solid fats. Solid fats, again, contribute a little bit more to the arteries. The plaque on the arteries, not very good for the bloodstream and circulatory system. And then you could replace that with oils as well. So choosing healthy and unhealthy circumstances. So kind of giving an example right here, making make cleaner choices even when enjoying your food for taste. So a lot of times people go out with their friends on the weekend or maybe you had a family birthday party or get together or something and you guys are going to a restaurant or something like that and you want to choose something that you're still going to enjoy. It's not the healthiest thing you could choose but it's still kind of a, a little tactic you could use to make a cleaner healthier choice so right here I got an example so for example if you went to Chick-fil-a and you got a chicken sandwich so if you have two choices well multiple ones but two of the original one you could do fried chicken sandwich or go to the grilled chicken sandwich so with these without counting any of the Chick-fil-a sauces or anything like that uh, putting in here just the chicken itself with the bun and then the lettuce and the tomato which it usually comes with on it counting here the calorie difference is significant so a lot of times people just think I'm getting chicken might as well just get the best one but a lot of times it could actually taste pretty good good even if you get the healthier version of it like grilled so here we got 440 to 380 calories a big difference there and the fat 5 gram difference which is significant I do want to point out that the carbs are a little bit more for the grilled, but that is also because it is kind of counting in the um, bun, and the bun at Chick-fil-A is like a whole whole grain one. And again, like going back to what we talked about with the whole grains, it uh, at, has more calories in it because it's a lot thicker than an enriched bun or an enriched pizza bread or something. So that's why it's a little bit higher in grams. Um, the protein uh, is a little drop down, but not significant at all, just one gram. So I feel like when you're going out, if you're going to different places, because they have grilled chicken sandwiches at many fast food places, not just Chick-fil-A, you could choose a different option, a healthier one. If you really don't want any salad um, or fruit, you could choose uh, grilled chicken instead. And that's just one of the many options you could do, um, choose to do when going out to eat and doing these fun activities or something and just not totally going all out, staying healthy, staying clean, but 
still making those small decisions that over time actually impact you in the long run, impact you overall. So those are just uh, some key things to keep in mind. So breaking down the cra cravings, meals throughout the day, clean food. So vegetables and fruit, we talked about that a little bit. Um, they're very key and they actually have a lot of vegetables, especially have a lot more protein and stuff which we'll talk about um, in a little bit here. And fruits are crucial. They have a, a good amount of sugar in them, but they're, again, not the artificial. Uh, one of the things, too, I might talk about a little bit, too, later on, but the red raspberries that a lot of uh, the fruits have are antioxidants. So a lot of people are like, okay, I need antioxidants. A lot of people don't really re understand the reason why. So a lot of times with the antioxidants, what happens is that in the body from our environment like pollution or other various things we have free radicals and free radicals are like these things that enter our body and they're just moving around they're just moving around all over because they don't have enough electrons that they need so what it can do is damage tissue inside of you what these antioxidants you could do get from them that will help those free radicals and that they'll give an electron to that free radical to stabilize it so that free radical will be stabilized so what will happen is that from that free radical going everywhere all around damaging tissue, it can be stabilized and go slowly and pretty much dissipate from that because it's got all the electrons that it needs in an electron shell. So it's a lot helpful there. That's why antioxidants are big and those fruits that usually have them, I like red raspberries. They have them. I like eating those and blueberries as well. And so a lot of those fruits like that too, you could just sit there and just munch on them as snacks instead of chips. So that's one of the reasons why fruit is really, really important with with uh, cleaning the body and cleansing it and detoxifying it as well sometimes and helping with those free radicals that um, need the extra electron. Small meals, watch portion sizes. Like I mentioned before, portion sizes are significant. People don't really think about how big of a deal it is, but um, it, it is a big deal and it's a lot of times cheaper too, like I said, because last time I knew that it is a significant difference from a medium to a small at Starbucks. So. It is, it is a significant difference there. And small meals throughout the day help your body to digest it better as well. Because if you have one big meal at the end of the day or two big meals at, in the day, your body won't be able to digest it because it's getting so much food at all at once. So I have trouble digesting it and then it won't digest it properly a lot of times. And then you'll lose some energy sometimes as well and kind of feel dragged on throughout the day. Uh, some more tips here consume high fiber meals with high fiber uh, high protein so what we want is from natural resources as well we don't want um, vitamins that we take or supplements we don't really want it that way we want it from like vegetables are a big one with the protein and fiber um, fruit not as much because fruit is more carbs doesn't ha and sugar it doesn't have as much of that protein that our body wants to even get close to what we want for that you'd have to consume a very very large amount of fruit so we're looking at uh, vegetables and some other ones are like spinach is a good one I'll talk about that a little bit but spinach celery some big uh, tips there in the veggies no provocative foods in the house only healthy foods so those are ones like that are very tempting cookies or what whatnot so I would say if you have a ton of that in your house start small start taking away a little bit at a time because if you take it all at once it's not going to go well for you. You're not going to be able to just do that consistently and stay on that path of just having cleaner food and healthier food in your house. Instead, you're going to probably go back to it and probably have more junk food than before. So it's really going over time, taking away those foods in your house so that it's less tempting to eat them. Um, create a non-food reward. Some examples, massage, new favorite clothing or bubble bath are some of them that I found. And so... With these, what we're trying to shoot for is not to have a reward like, all right, I'm going to eat clean the whole week, and then Saturday night I'm going to have a massive meal, high calorie, high fat meal. We don't want that. We want to make sure you're still on that diet. So when you're there, some of the rewards you could use is sometimes massage is good for people. They like love that. And uh, new favorite clothing, maybe there's a clothing out there that you like, new shoes maybe, and kind of reward yourself with that for staying on your diet for a certain amount of time. And that will help you stay consistent. That won't help. That won't help if you have a food reward where you have a massive meal or something high sugar and throws off the whole whole diet, whole weight loss journey. So, 
really doing a reward can help and help you aim towards that goal. Drink calories. Like I mentioned before, many times the drinks we consume contain a large amount of calories. Uh, a lot of times with Gatorade, soda, they actually have a lot more calories than we think and they're not very satisfying. That's why we call them empty car calories a lot of times and they're just like wasted calories because I'd rather spend that amount of calories on something that's actually satisfying for me. Even if it's junky, it's still something that I would eat and it would sit in my stomach and satisfy my hunger. So, some examples, Coca-Cola mini cans. So just under eight ounces, a lot of times people bring this to their picnics, birthday parties and such, 90 calories per can. So that's actually a significant amount for a mini Coca-Cola. The regular ones, I believe, have around 140 around their calories per can for the regular bottles or regular, no, regular cans, I mean, sorry. And so uh, stuff like that, you got to just consider drinking and kind of, it's like a waste of room. It's kind of like you have calories that you're able to use and you just wasted 90 of them because you just wanted to drink this. So that's one here. Another one is Gatorade. A lot of people think sports drinks are super healthy, super good, and they are a lot of times, but um, they do have contain a large amount of calories and sugar a lot of times too. This one is Gatorade too. You'll see a little bit in the images here. Got like a purple, um, orange, some grape, and then blue, and then some cherry too. So right here, Gatorade 2 does have less calories, 30 grand calories for a 12 ounce bottle. So that is significantly lower than a regular Gatorade, which is usually around 140 calories per bottle. Now, there are there is Gatorade Zero, which a lot of times at the most has 10 calories. But what I noticed with those, because I do drink those, is that you don't want to drink them a ton because there's a ton of sh sodium in it as well that kind of replaces it because they still want that taste. They still want people to like l like the original taste without the sugar. So they really usually replace it with sodium. So that is something to watch out for if you're going for a sports drink like Gatorade or Powerade. So what to drink instead? Water. Water is a great thing to drink. Um, a lot of times people don't really drink enough of it. We need a lot of times to drink water when we stay hydrated even in the winter time. Uh, just because you're not sweating as ton as you are in the summer doesn't mean that you're not dehydrated. And um, so water is very key in making sure that we stay healthy, stay on that path, and it can replace some of the other drinks that are higher calories, like Coca-Cola and um, Gatorade. So some of the benefits, um, some of you may know this, some of you may not. Uh, reduce inflammation, get rid of excess body weight. Um, a lot of times people don't really realize how much maybe sodium they're containing in their body from the food they ate because a lot more sodium in meals now and um, the excess body weight and size so you can get rid of that and help you on your weight loss journey. So um, help with some detoxification of body. Some of the material formed after working out can actually stay in the body and then later on go somewhere else if you don't drink enough water to stay hydrated. And obviously the most important one probably, stay hydrated. That's what it's very beneficial for. And uh, staying hydrated again it's a lot harder to understand when you're in the winter, in the fall, with the months coming up, but you can still get dehydrated. It can still happen. Um, another thing to point out, if you do get ill, keep going with the water. It helps the body flush out the system, flush out all the junk from getting sick or whatever you have. And so that is something uh, that helps a lot too. A lot of times, thirst is actually the last resort of dehydration usually you're already dehydrated if you're thirsty which not a lot of people understand a lot of people think I'm thirsty I must be dehydrated no it means you are already dehydrated now it's trying to signal that you're dehydrated with the thirst and um, sometimes that thirst doesn't actually work especially if someone ignores them for a while if everyone ignores the thirst uh, stimulation they'll just think okay I'm not thirsty, I must not need water, but a lot of times there's other forms that kind of the body signals that you're thirsty. Um, so a lot of times here people, you know, say this is, it looks like this is like a wall that you broke through and you got cracks in that you're about to burst through to what you need your goal weight to be. So a lot of times say like people have been 
pushing hard, adding thirst over here, a lot of adding the hydration maybe. Maybe you've been nailing it with the fruit and the vegetables over here. And then maybe over here, exercise is going fine, which you didn't talk about too much today. And then, you know, you're almost about to break through. You're about to break through and you've been decreased, decreasing your weight significantly. Or maybe all of a sudden you're around this weight where you go up and down, fluctuating, gaining and then losing, gaining and then losing. So a lot of times what people need is protein, consuming protein. So the breakthrough with a greater amount of protein intake. And this doesn't always necessarily mean protein shakes, protein bars. You can get it a lot of different ways naturally, like through vegetables and such. So um, experience from protein intake increase. Someone here, a client here actually had a breakthrough, broke through the plateau of uh, losing weight. And she said that the main thing was, gain, was gaining more protein in her diet. Increasing the protein intake, which helped a ton and helped her break through that plateau. So that's one thing to add there. Um, some of the things here is different ways to add protein. Um, vegetables. Vegetables are big for that. Um, I pointed out spinach. I like spinach a lot. Baby spinach. You can add it to soups. You can add it to various things. Um, I like to use it like this over here with the bowl. I like to use it as my lettuce. Add tomatoes on top, cheese, um, Italian dressing light and different things like that. And so a lot of times you can just add it to different things. Just add a little bit more protein to it and some other nutrients as well. Um, I know they're high in potassium. Potassium is very important. Um, I know personally sometimes I get, I used to get calf cramps and it helps me get cramps and stuff, potassium. So that's one reason to add in there. But with the protein, it's really big gaining it through vegetables and not so much through protein bars or protein shakes and so forth. Um, I know personally sometimes I used to have with the protein if I had too much protein my body couldn't handle it as much and process it well so then I would get um, protein in urine sometimes too so that is a big thing you gotta watch out for with the protein bars and muscle you know I protein shakes like muscle milk and stuff like that so um, and sometimes people don't like the protein shakes protein bars because they relate it to people that are really gaining muscle getting strength but these are just some other ways to get protein in, in every meal so with um, for instance a spinach for if you're cooking uh, chicken on the grill something like that just add some spinach on top and then whatever uh, spice or whatever you were going to add to the chicken later it could help like that um, replacing the lettuce on your sandwich with spinach cheeseburger if you're going to have a cheeseburger turkey burger whatever um, you can add it in with that too and um, adding it through there and then sausages and uh, uh, various ways so that's one of the why, reasons why I chose spinach as an example because you can add it to so many different different meals that you have during your day so um, some fun ways to consume protein too maybe you want to have maybe you don't want it bland you don't want just protein shake or bar or just adding it to a meal you want something extra so smoothies and shakes are an option you can make them homemade um, I know at like Wegmans Walmart various places they sell the protein powders and um, when you're making one I suggest you use the vanilla kind because it actually is, helps a lot more and not adding as much flavor to the actual smoothie and stuff so it's one way to do it um, so like yeah you can have a fun way a little bit fun over there a little bit uh, shake slash smoothie over there and just having a more fun thing there that you can drink not as much of a chore really to do and with protein you want about more like 0.64 to 0.9 grams per pound of body weight so you want to make sure you get in that range and that's kind of uh, the 0.9 is upper end too so you kind of want to go down towards the 0.64 if you just want an adequate amount of protein in your diet and then when you relate the protein to different uh, nutrients too you want about uh, two times the amount of protein you have in for carbs and grams and then half of that uh, in grams for fat as well when you're trying to look at your diet and trying to match it up for the uh, one of the not perfect but ideal general guideline there so so some breakthrough in other ways maybe that was something you've been doing maybe the, that the protein was what you've been nailing the entire time maybe that's what you've been pushing and pushing it's the protein and protein and there's other ways to get better at this and get better in the weight loss so 
Increased water intake, like we talked about, is very important because it can get rid of that some that excess body weight, especially if you are increasing your protein to as much as 0.9 grams per pound. That can help significantly in uh, flushing that out because protein does take a lot longer to digest compared to carbs and fats. So that is one option. Increased fruit and vegetable consumption, again, we talked about the different ways that fruits can help you, not just because they're healthy uh, and the vitamins they provide. It's also because they can help with, uh, you know, antioxidants, the free radicals in your body, various ways um, through there as well. And they can replace some of the junk food that you have, like chips, pretzels, what have you. Watch portion sizes. And uh, a big key with this is using food diaries online. So if you, they have apps out there, you know, here we use Vitabot. There's other ones, Chronometer, uh, My, My Fitness Pal, and there's different ways to log in your food. And a lot of times you can scan it and stuff, and it usually gets uh, uh, the serving pretty close to correct. A lot more than you guessing and then writing it down on a notebook. So that's something that I would uh, suggest doing when you want to go through your breakthrough. You're thinking, oh, I tried all the water, I tried the protein, I tried to get that in there. I tried to increase the uh, fruit and vegetable consumption. But now you're trying to get to the grams is what you're trying to miss. It was what you're missing, so now you got to attack that and aim for it because a lot of times that's what people people miss because a lot of times you might look at a box of maybe let's just say cookies or something and you're like oh it's only that many calories and then you realize it was like only three of them and you ate the whole box so it's like something like that where you're kind of missing out and you're really missing the serving size and not really understanding the nutrition facts from that standpoint um so what we kind of talked about today, just kind of recapping what, what maybe we could apply, hopefully you could apply at least, if not all of these, at least a couple of these things to your life. So staying away from processed foods, choosing whole foods like whole grains, um, again, very important. It could be helpful on the road. I know for me sometimes when I'm on the road, I like bagels, high calorie, but if I ha was going to choose uh, healthier options with the bagels, it would go multi-grain or whole grain bagels. They're the same, practically very similar, if not the same thing, uh, at many places like Dunkin' or Tim Hortons or something like that. Um, and then like a low-fat cream cheese if they have that too. So those are just some helpful tips there. Clean tactics, again, on the road, very helpful with, to do these things and to make these small changes in your diet when you're just having fun, <laughs> let's just say, and just eating. Uh, different things that maybe aren't the healthiest things you could consume so that's very helpful uh, drinking fewer calories so a lot of here like we said a lot of times these are called wasted calories or um, empty calories because you're not very satisfied from them and instead you're getting a significant significant amount of calories to your consumption so uh, drink water again we already talked about a little bit with the inflammation helping reduce that also helps reduce your blood pressure cholesterol as well because it gets a lot of this stuff like from cheeseburgers and stuff the plaque that's in your arteries out and so there's many many different things there that we talking about and then breaking the through the plateau through protein um, it can be implemented in different ways as well again spinach isn't the only one that you need to eat for protein there's many other ones um, there's celery cucumber zucchini various ways and you can add them to different dishes and stuff um, I know a lot of times like zucchini and uh, squash sometimes we add together and just cook it on the in the pan with some olive oil or something on top of it and just it's clean eating as well not a ton of butter or anything like that so so yeah that's kind of what I was talking about today hopefully you gain something from it um if you guys have any questions I can answer them because I know I didn't uh, I give you a chance to answer, ask any in the middle of this. Um, to go back, you were talking about free radicals and being yeah. stabilized. Yeah. How are they stabilized again? They're stabilized by the electron from the antioxidant. So, let me see here. So, um, let me see here. We can leave it here with increased fruit. So, when you increase the fruit, red raspberries, so they stabilize because you're adding an electron. Antioxidants have electrons attached to them and when they lose an electron they don't go crazy looking for another electron to fill their shell. It's like a valence shell 
of electrons there. Instead, they just give one off and are still there to help out and kind of just like, I guess, healthy for the body. But they don't they don't damage the body by losing an electron because they gave one to a free radical. These free radicals come from different because of our environment outside and everything like that. It can come from uh, certain foods we eat, you know, pollution stuff like that. So, yeah. Any other ones? With this. No. I think portion size is one of the most important things to do. Until you start weighing your food, you don't realize how much food you're eating. Yeah. Um, and if you lose by the body, which I have not for a long time, but I know when I did, I know what the numbers were, I know how many grams I had to have and everything like that. Yeah. And now when I start to slide and I weigh them, Oh wow, that's a lot more than I'm supposed to have. It's just amazing to me how you can get away from portion size that's right one mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, portion sizes. A lot of times you can get the cups, the serving cups, and everything. Get your cups and spoons out, measuring everything, and uh, understanding how much is actually actually is what you're consuming. Yeah. Yeah. I always underestimate. You know what I always do, Kathy, is when I ask when I'm out, I always ask them to bring me a take home container when they serve my meal. And I take half of everything on my plate and put it in there. Now, sometimes I cheat, absolutely. I'm, I, I, I freely admit that. But <laughs> that's the easiest way yeah, for right, me to. Because right. They overserve you. They always do because they know that you're going to come back because you like the food here. Yeah, and it kind of goes to the addictive part too. Well, that was a, the, the whole tolerance. That was new to me. I didn't realize yeah. that you, you know, it's habit forming to have the, you know, the, the addic obviously the addictive foods, but I didn't yeah. realize that you, some you lose your taste for it, but it takes more of it to give you the same. Yeah, the addictive, yeah, the same feeling there, definitely. It's it's crazy how much you actually would have to consume to get the satisfaction back from when you originally had it. Um, a lot of times I see that, even with myself sometimes, with people that have coffee, a lot of caffeine, coffee and stuff. Like, my sister and my brother started to drink ca coffee, and now they like having it more and more because they don't get sometimes the same pleasure of the caffeine from it as when they had it like originally within the first week or so of them drinking it so something like that is very a good example of how tolerance can build in the body and how have anything to do necessarily with uh, feeling satisfied or satiated like, like more with the brain like it's more with the satisfaction um, what it has to do with that is with the dopamine being released and a lot of times your body becomes adaptable to it so um, they'll change and kind of process it more easily and I believe it's more efficiently as well so if you're not enjoying it longer if you're if you're not sat consuming it longer maybe inside of the body digesting it a faster rate then it's not as satisfying that way on the one extreme of the whole thing it's like a drug addict a little bit is okay at first well I'd like a little bit more I'd like a little bit more because I'm not feeling the same way and I'm guessing that's what a drug addict is like I don't know but you know, sure. I am positive <laughs> <laughs> um, you know you have a little scoop of ice cream that was good a little bit more being better a little bit more yeah. A little bit more, yeah. They do. I did see also. It is not completely a thing that you would get diagnosed always with with a food addiction. Usually, if you get diagnosed with that, it's usually when you're very like obese and stuff. Not when you're just like consuming it right. and then working it off. The, the extreme. Yeah, it's the extreme. That's usually usually where you get diagnosed. So. It's not always a doctor will diagnose you as you're addicted to uh, cheeseburgers, you're addicted to this type of food, you're addicted to that. They don't usually say that. So it's just really understanding what effect it has on your body, then realizing your habits towards that and saying, okay, I think I am addicted to this. And, you know, addiction is a stronger word, so a lot of times people don't like to use it. But it is a lot of times that's essentially what it is, is you like it because your body 
loves the pleasure of feeling this way with it and satisfied and the taste. Is that considered like emotional eating or is that It can be, but not always because technically it is I I feel like sometimes with the emotional side of things it's sometimes the way you feel in the sense of not really happening too much chemically but it is chemically dopamine and other chemicals being in your, your bloodstream then your brain yeah because then your brain changes to say I want this more so then your brain um, becomes it comes into a habit of wanting this pleasure and realizing okay when he has this when Dominic consumes this this is what I feel like okay let's try to make him do it again by having him crave this and desire this from a you know physiological side of things so so what I want to kind of lead off is is day by day so what good the cough cup sh says what good shall I do this day what good will you do for your body whether that be for the part we didn't talk about too much exercise or what type, type of good what good will you put inside of your body health wise nutrition putting in good fruits and vegetables and uh, other things like that and realizing that a lot of the food nowadays is changed dramatically since uh, uh, when they first process them and realizing that they can become addictive if you're not taking the right steps and that a lot of the natural stuff is what you want to go to even when you're just trying to enjoy yourself like I said at a restaurant your family friends um, try to choose a healthier option where it actually isn't disgusting where you just hate it and feel like you wasted your money it actually is just a little bit healthier option and tastes practically practically the same if not a little better better for the body for sure yeah the calorie content <laughs> yeah I know yeah, the calorie content is. Sometimes I, I go by the donuts at the tops and I you say the calories. Are, no, I don't really. Need <laughs> yeah, no, it's. So it does work. Yes, 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 it does. I know. Yeah, I know. A lot of times too, they had a. There was a movie that went after McDonald's a little bit for it. So, yeah. And then uh, they, they're posting it a lot more. And again, with the calorie content too, a lot of time it is like based on what they made it, the original donuts that they processed. Because technically you don't really know, from a science standpoint, you don't really know exactly what calories in that specific donut that's in the case. They'd have to like burn it and then the energy that they gain from it is actually the calorie. So it's, it's, it's still, it's not specific, but it is pretty accurate the wide range span there and it's like the fries and not every fry is going to be this amount of calories some of them are larger than others some of the you know fries at Wendy's or something a box small might have a lot more than a big a large one because it just all they do is dump it in and see if it fits so it's not always so, so specific Oh wow, sugary solution at McDonald's. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sugar and ketchup. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They do double fry it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the healthy calories, yeah. yeah. Um, but you don't know if it's the dressing, is it the meat, is it the cheese, you know, what is the cheese, you can't tell how it's not. Yeah. It's yeah. And again, that kind of, uh, like Nancy said, it kind of points back to the whole foods, whole grains. They have a lot more calories, but it's still full. It's actually a lot of times thicker, like I said and they enriched or refined so that's why it's a lot more calories it just don't be too scared I wouldn't have it all the time but it, it, is, it does contain a large amount of fiber and nutrients that your body needs even though it does have a greater amount of calories so
what's considered what good food, food and bad. bad food. So, are you, did you run into any of that with your... Like, what's the good food like nowadays? Cholesterol itself. Like cholesterol, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, with in terms of cholesterol and learning that stuff, um, I didn't come across it too much in the research for this, but I do know that like a lot of times the leaner meats you would get. So like, for instance, if we're having tacos, I try to get my mom to do turkey, ground turkey. Um, one that's a little bit more expensive is bison. Bison's leaner too. You get bison patties, um, ground bison. Um, I know that too, but um, looking at, into it, uh, I don't remember a ton about that specifically with the, with the cholesterol. The animal fat cholesterol. Probably, yes, it is. Yeah, mostly the animal. Yeah, so that's why that's why the burger isn't the greatest, uh, even without the cheese and all the other stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And the big thing they were saying was um, don't eat eggs every day. You know, like if you have eggs, whole eggs, every day for breakfast, that's not what they meant. You know, that, that you still get a good um, cholesterol content eating eggs every day. So if you just eat them occasionally, um, or take the yolk out and give it to you twice. That's what I read. There's a lot of people, like, I know my husband's grandmother ate eggs every day for breakfast, you know? <laughs> every day for breakfast, every day for breakfast, yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, of course, she lived to 103, so there you go. Right, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Eggs. Eggs are good, yeah. Eggs are good with the protein, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, low sugar, low fat. Yeah. They do have other additives, so sometimes you do have to be careful. Um, like I mentioned with um, the Gatorade, you got to be careful with the sodium because they still want people to taste that flavor. Another thing that I noticed too that I've been careful of is that if you get like dressing that's low fat, a lot of times they add a ton of, of um, sugar in those. Um, one reason why I specifically went lighter with like Italian dressing or something like that was because of the sodium content. It wasn't really the fat. Um, I saw there was a ton of sodium in the other one, so I'm like, oh, I'll go lighter. And there was this a significant drop off, which then contributed to the calories. So uh, there's various things because a lot of times they'll take away one thing and then push the one thing that they took away thinking it's healthy, but then you don't realize what they replaced it with to make it actually taste yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Training in it, yeah. And yeah, over time. Over time, you'll get a taste to it, to spinach and different vegetables that you have. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's something you gotta really think about and realize. And a lot, over time, like you said, your body will adapt to it. Build the endurance. It's it can happen a good way. It won't just happen the bad way with the tolerance to eating more calories, eating more cheeseburgers and stuff like that. It can help it happen the good way too. It's just you gotta actively work towards that. And a lot of times, it's easier to work the body towards the p negative adaptability than the positive. So. So yeah. Well, that's it. Thank you guys for joining today. Thank you for attending the thing there and hopefully it was helpful. Thank you.